Hello guys and welcome to the first Neo2 build guide on the channel. I'm working on some new game plus builds already but I decided for my first playthrough to focus on Tonfa and Hatchet and I wanted to share what I did to help you reach new game plus with relative ease and I'll also give some suggestions on how to run it in new game plus if you decide to stick with the format. Whilst it is a Tonfa build there's still a lot of things you'll be able to take from this even if you don't use the Tonfa as it makes heavy use of poison damage and ninjutsu which is of course applicable to multiple weapons. One thing I want to mention is I've seen a few builds already posted that seem to specialize 
very specifically into one or the other being kunai damage or ninjutsu or poison builds the issue i have with this in a leveling build is over specializing can be a mistake early on because you lack the skill points and the armor sets necessary to make it work across the board for example specializing fully into ninjutsu is going to melt bosses but it's going to leave you in a bit of trouble during missions where you either run out of kunai or have encounters where the enemy boss is extremely resistant to that playstyle of course once you get to new game plus you can craft sets that specialized in untouched ninjutsu and you'll be able to craft shinobi boxes so for the leveling build i decided to synergize aspects of ninjutsu and poison damage into a playstyle that allows you to focus on your weapon damage when all else fails speaking of which tonfa specifically worked out great for me as it's strong against both humans and yokai due to the massive key damage it does allowing you to work things into the build to let you capitalize on that broken key you probably already know that breaking a human's key will let you spam grapples as well as easy knockdown abilities but on yokai you can easily deplete key then follow up with ninja feathers to do stupid damage that can one shot most yokai and rip 25% hp directly from a boss's health bar i really wanted to show you the kind of damage it does on end game bosses but seeing as the game is brand new i kind of want to avoid major boss spoilers so first i'll show you a small preview of how the build looks by the time you reach the end of new game before we go over in detail how you can progress in obtaining these skills and stats over the course of your playthrough so looking at the core stats on the left you'll see because we're running tonfa we're focused on courage and dexterity we kind of want to level these together and then take whatever else gives us a significant increase in either weapon damage life key etc dexterity is of course required for ninja power and the amount of ninja items we can prepare at about midway through new game you'll be able to do the stupid op one shot stuff on bosses without even running a ninja set now just a heads up whilst you don't need weakness talent from Omyo, it will help you melt bosses that much faster if you have it, so I advise taking a lightning talisman or something from Omyo and using that as much as possible whilst leveling. I didn't, and so I had to farm 30,000 proficiency in Omyo in one sitting to access the quest necessary to unlock the weakness talisman. If you made the same mistake as me, the easiest way I found to farm this proficiency was in the fight with the obsidian samurai. I literally just empowered my weapon with Omyo magic and beat him for a couple of hours and then got the proficiency. It's easier if you let him kill you after he rages so that you can just spawn in the room immediately and repeat however this boss also is insane to farm because of the amount of amrita given both as a quest reward and also in amrita crystals given to you by him afterwards that offer like 20k a pot so feel free to just kill him over and over if you prefer we'll go over the ninjutsu skills to take and stuff like that a bit later for my spirit guardian i preference ame no mitori i think with a build like this that makes use of agility and dodging feral is the best for burst counters and also serves as a panic button to avoid incoming attacks or escape from key being broken i continue to use this spirit even after after obtaining multiple of our feral spirits due to the stats it comes with anima charging is extremely useful for spamming our yokai abilities one of which is essential to the build which we will get to shortly um, it's also based on consecutive attacks and tonfa is all about chaining fast hitting and multiple hitting combos together 10 um, percent running speed doesn't seem that special but you'll really notice it when you stop using it and the tonfa is already a very mobile playstyle, so this just adds to the pace at which you can zip around um, divine rice drop rate this is perfect for your first playthrough as divine rice is what you'll need to obtain alexis and our choco cups early in the game it also comes with 20 percent lightning damage which also helps us as we will be applying a lightning modifier to one of our tonfa active skills and on the spirit the active skill anima charge is also nothing to scoff at so after you complete the first two main missions you will unlock a submission and a third main mission the third main mission and one of these submissions is where we can obtain the next two parts of our build one being an essential part and the other being an optional first i'll cover the submission as if you choose to do this it will help you before heading to the next main mission the submission is called dark omens right at the very end of this mission at the final shrine before the boss there will be an enemy standing outside the gate you can repeatedly kill just by going back to the shrine to pray after having done so for me he dropped a smithing text for an armor set that i used throughout the entirety of new game this is the sohaya armor and comes with the set bonus yokai annihilator which gives item drop rate versus yokai which is okay but the three piece gives stealth rank a versus yokai and trust me when i say this will make your life infinitely easier whilst progressing through your first playthrough you can approach sneak past even fight without nearby yokai detecting you and without this one simple act of carelessness can see you being swarmed so with this most of the time you'll only have to deal with one yokai at a time unless you do something spectacularly dumb which to be honest i think is something that we're all gonna do several times over the course of this game so either way this will help you the four piece gives melee damage versus yokai around five percent really nice but the five piece set bonus life drain or melee kill this is such a good comfort skill especially early on when you're trying to ration your elixirs it's yet another skill that you really miss when you don't have it so that's your first armor set if you choose to run it 
It's a medium build, but it's possible to stay at high agility rating if you just throw in a couple of points into stamina whilst offering you a bit more toughness. The next piece of the build and what is essential comes from the third main mission called the Viper's Sanctum. Once you defeat the main boss, it should drop its soul core. Now, the Yatsu no Kami soul core is without a doubt the strongest soul core you will obtain during the first half of New Game. And when synergized with the build, will be part of your loadout all the way into New Game Plus if you decide to keep playing the Poison playstyle. The way it applies to the build is obviously for the massive increase in melee damage to poison enemies, but the Yokai ability that comes with it is incredibly strong. And when you combine it with modifiers later on that give you increased Yokai damage, healing on Yokai ability hit, increased Yokai ability damage to poison enemies, this thing becomes an absolute monster. It also has huge uptime after you use it, like the boss itself, it will do two runs back and forth, smashing through whatever it encounters, so it's great against both single target and multiple targets. It also serves as another good panic button if you need to get heal off quick as it staggers enemies. So how do we actually go about poisoning targets? Well that's where the ninjutsu and active skill modifiers come in. So let's take a look at the ninjutsu tree, you're going to work your way to poison shurikens, Two of these are enough to stack poison on most enemies, but for tougher enemies, like some bosses, you're going to need to go through a bunch. You also have access to Gornut Broth, which coats your weapon in poison, however I've never needed to use this, as the combination of poison shurikens and poison active skill modifiers were enough. If you wanted to really go the full poison route, along with the Gornut Broth, you also have Blister Beetle Powders, but again, for this build, all you need is the shurikens. You want to maximise their efficiency. Over time, you'll also want to work on our boss melting ninjutsu, so you'll want to pick up everything related to boosting shurikens, including kunai and the kunai boosters. It will take some time before you can pick up things like storm kunai, but once there, you'll be able to do some silly things, which I'll go over shortly. Over here are the ninja feathers that I spoke about earlier in the video that also have one-shot potential against anything with zero key, but I'd advise holding off on these until a bit later. Make sure you come down to the bottom part of the tree first to pick up sneak attack, and once you're very deep into new game, I suggest picking up the Ninja Feathers and Quick Change Scroll. Using Quick Change Scrolls will help you survive any deaths for almost 5 minutes after using them. Just make sure to get out of danger immediately upon resurrection to heal as you come back with low health. Before we return to the stats, I want to get into the Tom for skills and the playstyle a little bit. Um, but before that, we need to go over our Samurai skill points, as these will be the first things you'll be putting points into. So the first thing you absolutely need to do is work a couple of points down to this right hand side, taking Flux and Flux 2. Now, if you're a new player, most people will tell you to pick up the running water skills first. And yes, you do want them, but I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to learn how to flux key poles early on. I know it can seem daunting if you're new to Neo with so many mechanics being thrown at you, but I promise it's not as complicated as it seems if you just spend 10 minutes practicing it at the start of the game once you unlock flux. So as you know, a key pulse is already just tapping R1 at the end of an attack or combo, ideally when the glow of light peaks around your character. A flux is the same thing except you're tapping the D-pad alongside R1 to change stances. So instead of a key pulse, you're just changing stances. Not only is this very beneficial to your key management, but it also ties perfectly into Tonfa which benefits from stance dancing combos. But before we get into that, I'd recommend focusing on low stance and mid stance when picking up your running water skills in order of priority. As the combos I'm going to show you on the Tonfa only need you to be in those two stances as the majority of the Tonfa damage is coming from active skills rather than the default stance attacks. So being in a low stance is what allows you to evade properly and manage your key. And as such you'll be spending the most of your time in that stance and occasionally switching into mid stance when doing damage. So the first thing you want to pick up on Tonfas is the ability Wild Lions. It's what's going to allow you to pick your moments early on and counter with nice damage so you can simply guard, wait for an attack, sidestep and follow up with Wild Lions. After that we're going to work our way to our combo skills, the first of which being Demon Dance. I suggest getting Demon Dance Earth first which is the low stance version. This will give you an evade animation whenever you perform a key pulse or flux. From here, you take the next skill down, pulverize, which is just pressing square directly after your demon dance and it will put you in a flurry combo. This does decent damage, but also huge key damage. Remember earlier in the video I talked about adding lightning damage to an active skill? This is the skill I apply it to, as it always manages to stack the lightning proc and slows the enemy whilst I switch to other combos, or if I just need to get out of there afterwards. After that, you can then um, take the same two skills for mid stance, and together they can be chained. So, start with the wild lions, key pulse, which puts you into demon dance, immediately press square to enter your flurry attack, then do a flux to switch to medium stance, immediately press square again and you're in another flurry and you can just keep that going, fluxing between mid stance and low stance doing those two combos. Also because you're switching stances but doing the same attacks, you can assign different active skill modifiers to your demon dance in both stances. 
so I've attached the lightning skill modifier to my low stance demon dance and then attach something else to the mid stance one. You should apply a poison modifier to your wild lions at the beginning. This can be found in the shifting tree, three skills to the left and you also get the lightning one down here in the lower section. For the rest of the shifting tree by the way, I won't go over them in detail because they're all personal preference but the one thing I would highly suggest you pick up is Leechkin in the bottom right corner that restores health when you use a yokai ability. So back to the Tonfers, you're going to throw a couple of poison shurikens on the target, engage, throw a poison modified wild lions to reapply the proc, then start doing work with your demon dance combos. Keep in mind the poison on wild lions won't be enough to proc poison on its own unless you stack heavy amounts of poison accumulation on your armor stats, so you will in most cases be applying all of your poison with shurikens, but don't spam them, sending out a couple followed by wild lions is enough to get a hefty proc on. Quite a way later in the game you'll be able to unlock this move heavenly chain this will replace wild lions as your new opener you will attach poison to this instead so you'll start your combos with a strong attack i.e triangle followed by a quick attack i.e square and this will spin your tonfas vertically reapplying the poison proc and doing heavy key damage as soon as the animation ends you key pulse into your demon dance combos and a nice hit and run tactic is to heavenly chain into your demon dance attack dodge backwards and immediately dodge back into the fight repeating the pattern you'll keep applying poison on the enemy whilst doing consistent damage towards the late end of your playthrough you'll eventually unlock focus strike this move is so good the only issue i have is that it's a charge attack on triangle rather than r1 circle like the ie quick draw or sign of the cross from katana and jewel blades so i accidentally keep fat thumb in the circle and trying to panic hit this move so i end up going into yokai shift when i don't want to but anyway this move is great for closing the gap it absolutely decimates human enemies not only is the damage great but it knocks them down even without a stamina break allowing you to follow up with an immediate ground grapple um, but one little thing to note is you have to hit them immediately after they've been knocked to the floor as they stand straight back up and you can only hit them once to activate the grapple icon like hitting them twice will cancel them out of that you know how if an enemy goes down on the floor and you try to stab them but you're in the middle of a combo and you keep hitting them then you lose the ability to grapple it's that kind of thing so after you've knocked them down dash in high attack them once and follow up with the grapple attack or finisher also towards the end of the game you'll unlock your mystic arts being able to cancel out of any tom for technique with a demon dance is amazing for chaining combos and evading attacks however i personally prioritize damage from consecutive attacks as ton for are amazing at key damage but a little on the low side in terms of direct damage and from here you can directly go into attack increase on tomfers which is a continuous upgrade slot of course you can grab both and just have one active but in terms of being efficient with our skill points that's what i chose to do so if we head back to the ninja tree we can talk about the boss melting op stuff so about mid game you should have unlocked kunai and storm kunai if you're super fortunate you've also managed to accumulate 3000 proficiency and omnia magic to pick up weakness talisman to wreck house all you need to do is apply weakness talisman run up to the enemy ideally behind if you have damage modifiers that affect damage from behind and you just spam your storm kunai if it's not already dead just create some distance and start flinging regular kunai into its face if it's still not dead which honestly it should be start using poison shurikens and cleaning up with melee damage I usually throw a couple of poison shurikens at the start anyway but try to remember that the damage bonus to poison enemies come from melee damage and not ninjutsu so I'm only throwing them at the start just to get a nice damage over time effect on them and then I'm ready to hit them in the face with my ton for sticks if they get too close and if all else fails you can always just throw out your snake yokai ability. Obviously the mystic art you're wanting in ninjutsu is increased damage to throwing items however if you're one of the people who decided to focus around poison melee damage and found yourself using golnot broth to apply to your weapon the enlightenment mystic art is ideal for that playstyle as it increases the speed at which you apply self buffs from ninjutsu and increases the duration of the effects. So finally back to the stat screen. The second soul core you're going to want to use should have yokai ability damage to poison the enemies. It's a little hard to say how you get this as mine came from the Rokurokubi. You know the guys that look like humans but then turn into long neck yokai but it's hard to say if yours will come from the same enemies because even though the effect is marked as a fixed stat so you would assume that it's always going to roll with those. Every single soul core I've had from these guys since getting this one has had a different secondary fixed stat so i don't really know what to do about that you're just going to have to keep your eye out for any soul core that has this it's really really strong so you do want it for when you're throwing out the snake ability for your weapon stats again it's personal to you but let's look at the kind of things i had on my weapons and armor so i had poison accumulation on my tonfas this isn't going to be enough to help on the amount of shurikens thrown and it also isn't going to help apply poison with your active skill modifier on tonfas but it does help keep poison on once it's already applied as you will only need 
need to get a hit in to keep it procced. Now if you stack the hell out of this, it probably could be applied just with your skill modifier or a single shuriken, but I didn't do that, so I can't tell you for sure. Um, life drain on final blow synergizes really well with the Yokai Annihilator 5 piece set bonus. Active skill breakers on here, I don't think it's something you would aim for, but it's decent against human enemies. The ranged weapons, don't worry about those until new game plus, as you'll be changing them all the time. For my amulets, I've got stealth against yokai again, no idea if this stacks I'm afraid, but I ran with it anyway. Auto grave recovery, not super important, but useful if you find yourself dying a lot. But okay, now we're looking at the stats we want to focus on, so melee damage versus poisoned enemies and kunai damage. These two you 100% want, these are what you're going to focus on obtaining either from random drops or by tempering the skills onto your amulets in the blacksmith. I don't think I did that on my second amulet because I was really lucky to get defense bonus based on courage which is such a huge defense boost that you end up not needing to upgrade this amulet at all because it will have much more defense than anything in new game even if the new item you get is 30 levels higher than this. I can't access my armor stats in this window but from what I can remember and if I still have them in my inventory I'll pull them up on the screen. I would have prioritized things like ninjutsu power, untouched ninjutsu, kunai damage, life key, any lucky purple rolls like faster wind recovery, attack increase on gloves and increase to attack and defense when using tonfa. Um, I think we've pretty much covered everything. Uh, I, I forgot to mention earlier that if you're going to use the ninja feathers I'd recommend the lightning one to synergize with your spirit that gives 20% bonus to lightning damage and once you unlock a second spirit you can take what you want but I took the one that gives life drain on yokai ability hit. Once you reach new game plus you have some choices to make in terms of how you want to continue with the build if you want to maximize the ninjutsu aspect for example you could change your armor set to the flying kato armor which gives the master of illusion set bonus which massively increases ninjutsu power and gives a damage bonus based on your ninjutsu power as well as a large increase to untouched ninjutsu which means if you stack untouched ninjutsu onto your armor with tempering you're going to be able to spam kunais for days as they won't be consumed as easily and when they do eventually run out you can craft a bunch of shinobi boxes which are items that you can use to restore your ninjutsu items at any time if you wanted to stay the course on the playstyle we had utilizing tonfas then you can either keep using yokai annihilator or you can look at some other sets by going to the neo2 wiki and looking up sets to find something that suits you to me a couple look interesting like the bold and the boorish set the only problem with it is it's heavy armor so you'd have to get rid of dexterity in place of stamina dropping your ninjutsu but keeping something like quick change scrolls from it it will give you a much tankier build with defense on heavy and it comes with life damage taken mid attack which is ideal for something like tonfa and hatchets and also increased attack and defense when using hatchets. Speaking of which, I totally forgot to talk about the hatchets. So very quickly, I don't use them often, but sometimes I like to switch them for a ranged playstyle. I can throw whilst running, throw whilst evading, do massive charge attack throws that follow with a back evade, can stun lock and follow up with a charge attack. The only damn problem with the hatchets is the skills you need to play the range style properly don't unlock until like the very end of the game, like literally the end of the game. So I feel really bad for anyone who decided to main hatchets from the start with the intention of playing a ranged play style. Um, they're really good from a close combat damage perspective, like the melee abilities of them are really good early on. So. Just don't main these if you want to play the ranged playstyle until you reach new game plus, trust me. So finally, I think we're pretty much done. I've no doubt forgotten something as trying to cover the leveling process in this build made it really hard for me to keep things organized and simple, which usually I have a bit of time of trying to do. So if I missed anything out or there's anything you want to know, please feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to reply to you. This took a while to make, so if you enjoyed this guide, please show your support by hitting the thumbs up. I'm working on plenty of build guides for new game plus for multiple weapons and play styles, so stay tuned for those. You can always catch us over on Twitch and Instagram, links down in the description, and I go by the same name across all platforms, so you can just look up Xenoswarm on any of those. And yeah, if you're not already subbed, consider doing so for more Neo2 content coming soon. Okay guys, take care.